Hi, I'm Amanda. And I'm Charles, and we are the co-hosts of the Capital Runway Podcast. So, Charles, did you see we have a new edition of Fly Washington Magazine available now? Yes, I did, and I look forward to opening it up and see what's inside. Yeah, so this month, I think we it's focused on the Virginia wine country. It's got okay. this beautiful cover image of some grapes, mm-hmm. and some destinations that are highlighted are... Puerto Rico, oh, Tokyo, yes. Denver, okay. and South Florida. Nice. I look so, forward to reading it. Yeah. Can't wait to dive in. And I was so excited um, that a friend saw our pictures in the last issue. Oh, really? Yes. We were featured as the co-host of the new podcast Yes, at the Airports Authority that all of our listeners get to listen to. That's so fun. Yeah. Actually, my aunt saw it as well when mm-hmm. she was flying through and she <laughs> sent me an email that was like, I saw a familiar face when I picked up the magazine. It was so <laughs> exciting. So yeah, that's fun to be yeah. recognized. Felt like a little a little bit of a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Who are we talking to today, Charles? We have Director Walter Tejada. Um, he's one of the board of directors here at the Airports Authority. Um, he's the first Latino member of the, of the board. So it's going to be exciting to hear from him get his perspective on the directions of the airports and uh, just being an active member of the Latino community. Yeah, we're also going to talk a little bit about Hispanic Heritage Month and everything that he has really done to promote Latin American flights from Dulles Mm -hmm. and uh, the involvement of the community. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this conversation. Yep. So let's get to it. So today we are joined by Director Walter Tejada. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, thank you for coming. We look forward to the conversation today. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about you know the role of a board member here at the Airports Authority. Sure, sure. We are, the board has 17 members and we're all appointed by the different jurisdictions. Uh, you know, we refer to this area as the DMV, the District, Maryland, and Virginia. But there's another partner, the United States government. So mm-hmm. the president gets to appoint three individuals. The District of Columbia gets up to appoint a number of their representatives in Maryland as well. And the governors of uh, Maryland and Virginia, in the case of Virginia, seven of us are appointed to the board for a total of 17. Wow. I was appointed in 2016 by Governor McAuliffe, and I've had the privilege to serve on the board since then. Our role here as uh, members of the board directors is not to micromanage. <laughs> <laughs> it is to provide uh, guidance and set policy on the uh, important issues that uh, help the Metropolitan Washington Airport Authority thrive. Great. Great. Uh, so you're co-chair of the ESG committee. Yes. Um, and just talking to you and hearing you, I hear your passion for community. Um, what type of impact would you like to see the Airports Authority have on the broader community? Yeah, I know that's an excellent question. I'm very happy you've, you've asked me that. Um, this has to be rewinded a, quite a while back mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, I have roots. Uh, I, I, I had the privilege to be the first Latino elected in the state of Virginia, mm-hmm. and one of my agendas was uh, sustainability, mm-hmm. environmental friendly initiatives, uh, walkability, reducing our footprint that we, for the environment and reducing green ga- emissions of green gases and all kinds of stuff. So we, uh, in Arlington County, I serve as uh, chair of the county board for a couple of periods and serve on the, on the county board. And we passed what we call the en- community energy plan, mm-hmm. where we look to reduce what the county uses in, in terms of power and, and making more clean energy and focus on all kinds of things and reduce and recycling, all kinds of stuff. So I already came with that background and thoroughly enjoy it. So, you know, the little things I so I came with that uh, already. And so I was reviewing policies and what the plans were here at the authority. There were already some good things that were being done, replacing our light bulbs with energy efficient light bulbs uh, were being done already. I mean, that, mm-hmm. but I also noticed uh, that they seemed to be kind of scattered. Uh, around in different areas, and sometimes the uh, left and the right hand weren't necessarily talking. Like if we got rid of an emergency vehicle, what, what will, will we get? Uh, one that may be electric, in, replacing a gasoline vehicle, things like that. And so I, th- I thought with a former colleague that was on the board at the time, Bob Lazaro, 
that we ought to look at the mm -hmm. sustainability aspect and see maybe there ought to be an opportunity for us to improve as an enterprise, as an institution, and take a look at maybe can we create a sustainability plan. And sure enough, I think that we, once we encourage staff, knowing that other departments were already doing some things, and when we put it all together, actually we were ahead of the, the game quite a bit. But now we have some coordination, establish some specific goals and where to improve, become more electrifying, more, more electric vehicles and things of that nature, and then look at the, what the best practices are and, and can we improve and all that. And I, I still to this day think that uh, we've done so much progress that we should be given some kind of award. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, a, as a, you know, the staff deserves a lot of credit. And so we've moved from sustainability now to ESG. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I first heard the expression, I said, what on earth are they talking about? Now we've got to deal with this. What is this? Essentially, it's a little bit more of the same. Mm -hmm. Just a few other components. Environment, social governance, uh, you know, responsibility, environmental part, I think we were ahead of the game already. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were a lot of good things that we are, are doing. We, we've uh, we got to continue to do more and improve. On the social aspect, you know, it's not that hard to look at how, I guess we, said, we were saying earlier, just saying that we value diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, okay, that's nice. But is it reflected on in how much staff, the type of staff we're hiring, and are people given opportunities for mobility? Do we have enough people of color, do we have women, and leadership roles and those kinds of things from all backgrounds? So, you know, as an institution, there were some good progress being made already by staff, but it doesn't hurt to have uh, the directors nudge a little bit and say, hey, more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, we can sit on our laurels. We have uh, changing demographics uh, continuously, and then we, it has to be reflected here, especially when workers are competing uh, or, or employers are competing for a shortage of workers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we must then make that more enticing and, and make it environmental friendly, uh, where they can feel good about it. And of course, the governance part is not negotiable. Uh, you know, we have got to have the best practices for governing as an institution. Part of it is what I mentioned, maintaining our sound financial stability. As people get more comfortable understanding what ESG means, it will still be attacked by some who don't feel those are good things in other parts of the country, <laughs> perhaps. But here at EMWA, we don't look at the partisan politics mm -hmm. and when it comes to that. We try to be responsive and, and re represent our jurisdictions the best way possible. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Have you met a lot of pushback in the efforts that you're trying to do to push you know, the Latin American community forward here on the board? Or has it been mostly met with open arms? I think uh, I was pleasantly surprised that people were open to hear what some ideas and thoughts and why. And one of the things I learned, you know, having had the privilege to serve in elected office, is that if you try to explain to people why you want to do something, if you bring them and along and show them and, and why this might be good or, you know, and look, listen to their perspective and try to incorporate things. I never have thought that I had the perfect solution uh, and I'm willing to, to accept that someone has a better idea, you know, so okay, so be it. But, I, but I'm not going to be shy from saying, no, yeah, this community hasn't been heard and we need to figure out how to... Uh, get into the table of opportunity and elbow your way in and say, excuse me, excuse me, we're here, we're not leaving. You know, as I say in Spanish, it's, Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. you know, the, the immigrant community. It's part of um, the, the, the census today it has over 63 million Latinos in our country. We have uh, millions of Latinos in, in this region. It's probably, the number is probably larger than what people uh, might officially say in some of the uh, census because a lot of times people don't want to be counted. Mm. So we have a growth on the count mm -hmm. uh, sometimes. So the numbers are there. The economic power is there. This is not just, I don't want it to be just this nice pet project for Walter Tejada, you know, and so on. No, it's just about the interests of the enterprise yeah. as a unit. And if my colleague can know about it, so once you tell people, inform them, and let them know as best as you can, give them data, I don't believe in alternative facts. <laughs> uh, you know, I do believe in having uh, uh, the source where you got your information. That's why I made a point to cite this, the U.S. Census and the Pew Research Center, you know, all this thing give you raw information. And of course, you, you know about a multitude of data that helps airports uh, and so on. I'm always citing data from our reports for example, uh, I'll give you this one because they're really good. <laughs> over $24 billion in economic output. Wow. The uh, rural airports here produce over 187,000 jobs related to the airports in, in our region. I mean, uh, you know, so I start going through these numbers and tell my wife, how do, you, how do you remember all that stuff? <laughs> well, it's important. You have to know your facts. Yeah. Great. Um, what's one lesson you've learned in your career that you think other people should consider for success in theirs? Mm. 
I know this might sound cliche, but uh, you have to have a positive mental attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And by and large, most Latinos are optimistic. It's part of my trait. You know, you would think that, you know, after all the different challenges we've had in life as coming here in this country and having to learn a language and uh, having to move multiple times, you know, you develop kind of like a negative attitude. But, you know, you learn, hey, you, you have to make it. And you develop, uh, especially when you're in the public arena, mm-hmm. you have to develop some thick skin, you know, sometimes because sometimes you might be, some people might tell you the greatest thing that ever happened and at the same time they might say you're the worst thing that ever happened. So, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So, you know, I think that we have to be optimistic. And I know there's a lot of negativity these days, you know, see it on social media, you know, all that stuff. And, and you can be naive. You have to, you know, of course, keep in mind uh, as much as you can be aware. Of. But, you know, it, the American dream is alive and well. And everyone has their own version of the American dream. I consider myself a person who's living the American dream. Uh, who would have thought that uh, some 13-year-old kid who came here to the United States uh, growing up in a, uh, El Salvador and, uh, would, would someday be the first Latino ever to serve mm-hmm. in the board of directors of the Metropolitan of Washington Airports Authority, given those numbers that I just cited to you, the, the, the effect it has in our region, the possibilities of opportunities that you know, can be open for a lot of people. And there are a number of ways. You know, I mentioned I was one of the first Latinos elected in Virginia. I think is don't give up. Keep a positive attitude. Don't give up. Yeah. You're one of the first elected Latinos in the state of Virginia. What does it mean to you to be the first Latino member of the board of directors? I was born and raised in my native El Salvador. Came to the United States at age 13. Not knowing the language, learn a new culture, had to go through all that. A single mom with three teenagers in New York City made her way, push yeah. us to get educated and find careers and so on. For good or bad, I think for good, maybe been first or this, first or that. And I'm the first Latino ever to serve here at NYU as, as well as in the board of directors. And I found that a little bit uh, puzzling at first. I thought, how on earth could that be? And it gets to a point where I hope they get, we get to the point soon where there's no longer the first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a continuation of uh, things and so on, so that we truly reflect our population uh, you know, in our region. So, yes, it's of significance, but I'm also quick to, you know, that well, it's nice to have the individual uh, mention. It is also about a team effort. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've advocated for when I first came in here is that there are more Latino staff hired by uh, the authority. I think we made some progress on that. There's more work to be done. But we're heading in the right direction, and all I can do is really encourage and push people be given an opportunity. And, yeah, we're competing with a shortage of staff, and particularly, you know, staff that's bilingual is, is tough. But, but, you know, it's not impossible. Being on the board since 2016, what do you like most about our airports? That's a, a good question. Um, but there are many other aspects of, of the airport. Well, it's, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. But there's always also a way to advocate for things you believe in. Mm-hmm. And as uh, we celebrate proudly Hispanic Heritage Month, no one was surprised <laughs> that I came here advocating for more flights for Latin America, mm-hmm. to Latin America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, not necessarily connectivity. That's nice, but what about direct flights? Yeah. And so, you know, that was another way. There's always a way to can advocate for those things. So our efforts mm-hmm. collectively to focus on the market in Latin America prior to the pandemic, making sure that we did the study. And, and, you know, and this is one of those for me where I asked staff to do some analysis. This to me was like a lawyer in court when you ask a question because you know the answer. Really, <laughs> you know? And so, but people need to find it out. And so yeah. when the market analysis was done, sure enough, it did seem that, that we have a lo- large numbers of the Latino community and that there's economic power within the community. Uh, and so we began trying to form a task force and do efforts to create more direct flights and trying to model it to the uh, Tel Aviv uh, uh, effort for Israel that, that was done. It was a big task force and so on. And then boom, the pandemic hit. Mm. But we already had started a lot of efforts uh, were from staff uh, reaching out to different airlines, different partners and uh, with the different uh, tourism groups, get that awareness uh, going. And sure enough, during a pandemic, guess which market, traveling market around the world had the most uh, economic benefit to the authority? Latin America. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a leading question, right? Better than the Asian market. Yeah. Better than the European market. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's something that staff should feel proud of. Uh, yeah, of course, I feel good about it because I was gung-ho on that we're going to move in that direction. But one of the reasons is that it is good for the bottom line. Turns out the value and diversity and inclusion is good for the bottom line. It's good business. <laughs> so, you know, we're, it's just going to be work in progress. There's more work to be done. 
I think we need to look at a couple of other places in Latin America where maybe Mexico, uh, you know, we already have some service there, but there may be other opportunities there. Lima, Peru could mm -hmm. be another one that could uh, be a natural, and Lima can serve as a hub for uh, direct flights from Dallas, perhaps. And then there they can go to Buenos Aires, to Argentina, Cali in Colombia, or you know, La Paz, Bolivia, or Santa Cruz, Bolivia. And the Bolivia market, I will highlight also something that we ought to look at more. You know, Northern Virginia is referred to sometimes in Bolivia as the 10th state, <laughs> because Bolivia has nine states. <laughs> so there's a large Bolivian community. I know sometimes the numbers may not be there, but I hope that we sort of keep that in the back of our heads and not rule it out for down the line. The other day I was telling someone, look, my role is to put the foot in the door and have you and, and, and try to have you come in. Once you're in, you need to swim. <laughs> you need to have the tools and you maybe, to you know, fly. facilitate. You need, yes, I like that. I like that. Yes, you need to be able to fly. That's right. You need to be, be, able, to, be able to navigate. Uh, you know, and so long as I'm here, I think that will continue to be my role. And I want to also say at this moment a special thank you to the staff for buying into elevating how we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Ever since I began saying, you know, we ought to take a look at that, and I think things have gotten better uh, in, in several areas. This is important. In the food that we serve at the airports, mm -hmm. in the staff that's being hired, in the service that we're, we're flying public, the traveling public can, can have, all of those things are of benefit to the enterprise as an authority. Uh, and, and so beyond the feel-good thing, that's nice. You know, it's good, but it is good for the bottom line. I know it's a long-winded way to answer the question, but it's, it's tough to answer that one, uh, you know, in a, very, in, a, in a short way. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. So final question, and we like to ask all of our guests this question, but where are you flying to next? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's the beautiful thing, beautiful thing about uh, the airports, right? Uh, you get connected. And, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, I consider myself a lifelong student. Uh, so I want to always continue to learn more about the world of airports. I attended, for instance, the um, U.S. Chamber of Commerce Aerospace Summit and learn more about vertical uh, aircrafts and mm -hmm. vertical ports and all that stuff that's really fascinating. So I am going to Long Beach, California uh, at the end of this month and first week in, in October to the um, ACINA conference, the, Amer the uh, Airports Conference International North America. And, and then for Thanksgiving, I'm hoping to fly to Guatemala. Ooh. And this is my brother where he lives with his family, with his Guatemalan wife and family there. And uh, I haven't seen him in a while, so we're, we're planning to. Uh, so uh, Long Beach, California, and uh, uh, Guatemala. That's awesome. <laughs> That'll be a fun, fun trip. Well, here's another question. Uh, any parting words for our audience? that you want to leave us today? I would say um, the world of Airpus is fascinating. There's a lot to learn and a lot of satisfaction to be gathered from participating in it. I would say that um, as I attended conferences, sometimes I've, been, uh, I've asked questions that have caused some long pauses mm -hmm. and because uh, I see panels in or audiences, the attendees, they are not diverse, mm. and especially lacking Latino participation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there have been a few times where in a room pack of people, <laughs> I have asked, why is it that we have more Latino participation? A way to answer your question is that, that you get involved in the world of airports and you never know where opportunities might come. Mm -hmm. It's another way of uh, getting good trouble uh, done and, and making sure people think mm -hmm. about that there ought to be some changes that ought to be made uh, that will benefit everybody. So I continue to be fascinated by the progress of technology and what we might have in the future. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to learn as much as I can so I can use that to provide guidance as a member of the board of directors of the Metropolitan Washington Airport Authority. Great. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been a really great conversation. Muchas gracias. <laughs> we don't travel to escape life. We travel so life doesn't escape us. We dream of a place anywhere in the world. And in the blink of an eye, we're there. That's the wonder of flight. All you have to decide is where to? Dulles International Airport. Let your imagination soar. Book your adventure today at flydullis.com slash nonstop. Yeah, that was a really great conversation. It was fascinating. Yeah, what did you like most about it? 
Um, I really liked how he talked about, you know, his passions for helping mm-hmm. Latino community mm-hmm. and, you know, just a lot of the underserved communities yeah. throughout the DMV region. Yeah, his passion for diversity, equity, and inclusion is was really key, and I really enjoyed hearing that. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to hear about his uh, trip to Long Beach in Guatemala. In Guatemala, yeah. absolutely. I don't think we have any non-stops to Guatemala. Yeah. Not yet, maybe. Yeah. Soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions for us, we'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email at info at thecapitalrunway.com. So that's a wrap for us. Thank you all for joining us, and we want to wish everyone a happy Hispanic yes. Heritage Month. Yes, enjoy the month. Yes. <laughs>